Hey everybody, it's me Chris. I'm back in the kitchen. The Giovanna Family Recipes. Today I'm going to show you how to make my original, my classic meatball recipe. Um, and you could use it uh, for a lot of different things. You can make them and freeze them. You can make them and put them in sauce. And today I got my Sunday gravy going over here. And you can also get this recipe on Di Giovanna Family Recipes. And you can see I put today, I put some nice pork chops in there. So while this simmers away, I'll show you my ingredients for my classic meatballs. And uh, so I got over here the meat. Now this is my own chopped meat. It's 50% pork, 50% beef. I put it through my meat grinder myself. I used uh, some pork shoulder for this one. And I used uh, a pot roast that I just cut up and uh, minced it myself. It's about a pound and a half. I got the Progresso breadcrumbs and some Italian seasoning. Some extra virgin olive oil, salt and pepper. I got grated, this is pecorino cheese. You could use Parmesan, it doesn't matter. Whatever you like. Two eggs. I got fresh parsley. I got a, a medium to small onion. I already had a little bit of chopped onion, but you wanna use about maybe a half a cup of onion. And I got some garlic here. I got four cloves that are kinda of small, uh, so that should be enough. And, um, you know, a couple ways you can make this. You could leave the onion and the garlic raw and put it right in the mixture. But I'm going to show you uh, my way of doing it, which is a little different. All right, so I'm heating up my pan here. I got a medium-sized pan, and I want to get it hot. I'm going to put in it a little bit of uh, extra virgin olive oil. And I'll show you how to chop the onions and the garlic. And the reason I'm doing this, I want to cook down the vegetables because I think when you get... The onion and garlic cook down and you caramelize a little bit. I just think it adds more flavor to the meatballs and I think it makes it a little bit moister and a more tender meatball. So that's the way I like to do it. But again, you don't have to do it that way. You could just chop this up, put it in raw and let it cook with the meatball. So it's a kind of small onion, but this is the way I chop it. I'll let the knife do the work and just make a couple of long ways. Don't go all the way through, a couple of cuts, and then just down on top. Try to make nice thin pieces. I want to fine dice and then run your knife through to make small dice. And then when you get to the end here, I just turn it on the end and go around and make sure you cut small pieces. All right, so my onions are in the pan. I'm gonna turn the heat up to medium here and just to, just add a tiny bit more olive oil. I think it's a little dry. I'm gonna season these with a little bit of kosher salt or sea salt and some pepper and let these start to cook while I chop my garlic. And basically, all I'm gonna do for my garlic here, I wanna fine mince. I cut off the end with my knife, okay? And I just give it a smash to take out the paper. Just like this. And then I'm going to get them all peeled. I'll show you how to chop them. Alright, so my onions are starting to cook. And you want to watch they don't burn. So keep an eye on the temperature. And make sure once they start to sizzle, you give them a good stir. And if you move the pan around a little bit and just flatten them out so that they cook even. So those are looking good. And now I gotta cut my garlic. And what you wanna do here is just put them long ways and start to run your knife across at first like this till you get them all sliced. Thin as you can. Okay, I think that's good enough. And uh, you know, my mother didn't do this. She, she put in the raw onions and she put in just slices of garlic. And if you like nice pieces of garlic in your meatballs, it's, a gr it's another great way to make it. Um, but I like to mince it. I like it to be fine and kind of melt away and disappear into the meatball. And give this a stir and we'll chop our parsley. All right, so with the parsley, leave the, leave the rubber band on your parsley. Don't try to take that off. And then just kind of shave down with your knife. Let the knife do the work. And it's going to take off all the leaves. It'll take off some of the stems too. 
and then that's it. You can you can discard this, but if you're making a soup or something the next day, you save this and you can make it for your stock. So once you do that, you just go through and just pick out all the big stem. All right, so I think I got all the big pieces of stem out. And if you missed a couple, that's all right. We'll chop it up. Now I want to take my knife. I got my hand on top of the knife and start to go along and just sharply press it down like this and then bring it back together similar to the garlic and go across again and what you want to watch for is when you're chopping herbs you need a sharp knife and you should scrape when you scrape you shouldn't see any green on the board you see how that's just wood if you if you got green smeared all over your board you're not chopping the herb properly you're bruising the, the herb you want to chop it so you get the maximum flavor and freshness so once this starts to get down a little bit just again use your knife and come across bring it back go through again all right so this is good enough i'm going to set this in my bowl until we're ready to use it all right so while my onions and garlic cool i want to get set up to bake the meatballs i'm going to put some i got some wax paper here i get the I want to make sure I get it the right size for this pan. And if it's a little big, it's okay. Okay. And then what I do to make sure it's flat, just some non-stick spray on the bottom. And press down the paper. Okay. And if you got a little extra, just fold it. And then I want to make sure my meatballs don't stick, so I'm going to spray this also get nice and coated and I'm gonna preheat my oven I'm gonna start cooking these at 425 all right so my onion and garlic mixture has cooled and I'm gonna crack my eggs right into the mix and the reason I let it cool is because I don't want to scramble these eggs and I don't want to put hot um, on onions and garlic right into the meatball mixture so I put those in and I'm gonna add my parsley right into and I'm just going to mix these eggs up a little bit before I add them to the meatballs. All right, so I'm ready to uh, put my meatballs all together here. And what I'm going to do first is, what I like to do is season the meat. I like to put the salt and pepper right on the meat. And so I can also judge how much seasoning I'm going to have. I don't want to add too much. And I would suggest, now my fresh cracked pepper, I would suggest if you're doing this for the first time, once you get it mixed, take a little piece and cook it in the pan and try it for seasoning to see if you got the right amount of seasoning so that you don't overdo it with the salt and the pepper. I've done this for a long time, so I'm pretty confident. Um, I'm going to add in my egg, parsley, onions, and garlic that we sauteed right into the pan. Okay. Set that aside. My breadcrumbs, I'm using the Progresso Italian breadcrumbs. And for this is about a pound and a half of meat. So I'm probably using three quarters of a cup of breadcrumbs and then the same amount of the grated cheese. And then I just like to add a little bit of extra Italian seasoning for flavor. You could add oregano, you could add any spices you want. You could add some garlic powder, onion powder totally up to you okay so what I usually like to do before I start to assemble them is I like to mix them right in the sink so I don't make a mess and first I'll start with the fork to combine it as well as I can all right so I mix these as well as I can with the fork now one of the reasons I do this in the sink is because I can have the cold water running and help me to roll it and also now that I'm ready to use my hands for the final mix I can see the mixture is a little dry so I'm going to add some cold water and you want a really nice moist mixture but just be careful not to overdo it if you don't have that moisture then your meatballs will be dry so just add enough water so that it's slightly wet give it a final mix and then we can start to roll out the meatballs and I, I, I'm going to just eyeball it and get a nice tight roll and you want the size to be 
um, a little bit bigger than a golf ball. And you'll see if you've rolled it tightly enough and properly, you'll see it's like a little, it almost looks like a fuzzy around the meatball. And then you know you've got a nice tight mix. All right, so my meatballs all rolled out. I got 20 meatballs out of that. That's about a pound and a half of the ground meat. So um, I'm going to put these in the oven at 425 to start. The reason I do that is because traditionally you should fry these first and get that nice crust on the outside with some extra virgin olive oil. Um, I don't do that. I like to bake them um, to take out some of the fat content and it makes a leaner meatball. And then when I put them in the sauce and let them cook for a couple hours, they're going to be tender anyway. So that's how I do it. I start at 425 for about 10 minutes, and then I'll lower the oven down to 350 and cook them for about another 20 to 30 minutes until they're fully cooked through. Then I'll put them into my sauce. Um, and I also just wanted to mention, with the mixture I used of beef and pork, you could just use ground beef. You could even just use pork if you want. Traditionally, it's beef, pork, and veal. Um, I don't use the veal only because it's very expensive. And um, I know that um, grinding my own meat, I'm making my own chopped meat, which uh, is also on my YouTube channel. You can check the, how I do that. But I know I got a good quality beef, a good quality pork. Um, I'm not going to buy a really expensive piece of veal and put it through the meat grinder. Um, it just doesn't make any sense to me. So I skipped that. Um, unless it's a real special occasion, then I'll go ahead and do it. But um, you could also use ground turkey instead of veal, which is a heck of a lot cheaper and has the same effect and gives you a really delicious mixture when you're making your meatballs. So I'm going to get these in the oven and I'll show you what they look like when they come out. All right, so my meatballs are done. Now remember, I started at 425 and then I lowered the temperature. I cooked at 425 about 10 minutes to get a nice crust on them and then I lowered it to 350 cooked them total cook time about 40 minutes and this is what they look like and you can see they have a nice crust on the outside and you can see all the fat and the nasty stuff has cooked out so that's not going to go in my sauce and then I want to make sure before I put them in I'll just roll them around and make sure I get all that fat off and then these are going to go right in to my sauce and I'm going to take one and set it aside to try it and get the rest into my gravy. Alright, so that's my last one. And look at the nice color on the bottom of these. They're all in there. I'll just stir them in. And you let these cook in my gravy. Now for at least an hour and a half, two hours. They'll get even more tender and more delicious. And then look at my pan. Now this is why I like to bake my meatballs. Look at all this nasty stuff. All the fat and the, the grease and... Um, the impurities in the meat has all cooked out because we baked it first. And I'm going to throw all this in the garbage. If we didn't bake them first, this would have went right into my sauce. I don't want this stuff in my Sunday gravy. Alright, so it's time to try one of these meatballs. Now, you could take these at this point, put them on a clean tray, throw them in the freezer once they've cooled, and let them freeze for about an hour and put them in a Ziploc bag without any sauce and then you'll have your own frozen meatballs. I'm going to take a little bit of my Sunday gravy just a little spoonful put over the top there I'm going to put some grated cheese on top and that's probably the perfect way to try one of these meatballs and it's really tender and let's see how they taste Hmm. Follow my recipe, how I just showed you to make these, and a good chance you'll probably agree, it might be the best meatball you've ever had. It's really tender, delicious, and savory, and you can do so many things with these. My son goes crazy for them. Um, one other thing, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Di Giovanna Family Recipes. And then you can email me if you like these meatballs or any of my videos. Or if you have any questions, you can email me. It's cooklikechris at gmail.com. Cooklikechris at gmail. And let me know what you think. Thanks for watching the video.